I think we've started. I think we started. I think we're here again. Hi. Hi. <sighs> here we are in the blanket fort yet again. It's cool in the blanket fort. It's cool in the blanket fort because it's very sticky outside today. Yes. Yes, it is. And I love the idea of sitting out in the garden and doing this. But to be honest, it's rising 80s and not likely to get any cooler anytime soon. <laughs> well, it's also, we're expecting a thunderstorm at any moment. The reason I know that is because my big toe is telling me all about it mm -hmm. in Technicolor. <clears throat> yes. So just before we started, we were both sitting here and we're like, oh my God, we're so tired. And we both took our hair sticks out. <laughs> <laughs> so we have stabby hair sticks today. I have, I have a stabby hair I stick. Have a, I have a stabby I have a hair stick. Airborne defenses. And yeah. And you know, dangle. It cursed me that this is not my hair stick. Oh, this is Courtney's hair stick. Okay. We have interchangeable hair sticks. So <clears throat> I, I I know that both of you guys have these. Yes, we do. I wear this one as a single because I managed to lose the other one. How but could you lose it with a dangly on it? It didn't have a dangly on it when I lost it. Okay, so wait a minute. So I found a spare here. No, no. This is this <clears throat> is actually while I was moving to Texas, I think at a gas station. Because I had gotten out to the car to get gas, and that was the only time I'd been out of the car. And when I got to a stopping point, put my hand up, I only had one hair stick instead of two. Oh. So I somehow had managed to lose one. Have you ever seen a series of stories that's based around an object where somebody has a particular object and something happens to them, the object moves to the next owner? Kind and of like the little dragon with the coin, and in order to spend the coin, you have to accept the dragon? Yeah, something like that, where, where this, <laughs> you follow an object through history to, to learn its history and its story. Ah. It's like it's like provenance on an art painting. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. That's fun stuff. Yeah, and I always thought it would be fun to take some sort of innocuous thing, mm -hmm. like a hair stick. Well, and it would have to be intrinsically valuable enough, not like, like jewelry, although that works. Um, but intrinsically valuable enough for people to not immediately discard it. Yeah. Because honestly, if somebody <clears throat> found just a black stick without... Um, but it's sharp and it's pointy. It is sharp and it's pointy, but if this was in the dirt, most people aren't going to pick it up. Well, I don't know. I, I guess I'm enough of a magpie that mm. I would pick it up. Yeah. I would at least go, what is that? And, yes, know, yes. <clears throat> because I, I have a magpie. Like, that looks like it might be a tool. Ooh, it's pointy sharp. Yes. You know, I can use this for <laughs> prying things out or stabbing somebody's eye or giving somebody a lobotomy. I it's... mean, my magpie tendency is more like, ooh, shiny rocks. And, <laughs> and by which I do not mean dice. <laughs> Literally shiny rocks. And feathers. <laughs> ooh, look at that. Yeah, it's like... And shells. <laughs> <clears throat> it's kind of odd what we collect, isn't it? Oh, gosh. I, I gave up my shell collection a while back um, and I had shells from Alaska and Oregon and Maine and yeah wherever I'd been I always I always collected seashells because mm -hmm. I went through a phase fairly young when my great-grandmother no my grandmother was teaching me how to beach comb that I wanted to be a marine biologist oh fun yeah and yeah. I wanted to study the littoral zone and well that would be interesting so not like it, whales was this on the Oregon coast mm -hmm. so you know that's interesting because my grandmother Grandma B, her thing was they would go out to the coast every summer, yeah. and she would she would beach comb, mm -hmm. and for years, I mean for like forty years, they went out every summer to the same campground, the same beach out by the South Jetty, and she desperately wanted to find the glass floats because there used to be this thing where you yeah. get the glass yeah. floats from. Um, they were all over the place. They were well, but they weren't. Is My the point. family had <clears throat> hundreds of them. Well, it just depended on where you were on the coast because mm -hmm. this was near Florence, but she yeah. never found one. And one morning she went out after a storm and found three of them. Yeah. All on the same morning. And they so, were three different sizes. So mm -hmm. Grandpa made her a macrame hanger and it hung on the front porch because she was also, she collected wind chimes, which I'm sure annoyed the neighbors to no end. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, she collected all kinds of really interesting things that were all over her yard my, from the uh, beach. My great grandparents' place had hundreds of the floats and they lived about 10 miles up the North Fork, so I used to live in oh, Florence. Yeah. So very much that area. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's not unusual, the stuff that, that right. appears. So I actually am very particular about wind chimes. I bought a wind chime at the farmer's market the other day. Yeah. And Sanford was like, why did you do that? And I'm like, because there was this <laughs> sweet little old lady. Boy, she's making pink. Well, like, you know. So this is the fun <clears throat> thing. Is she had inherited a large stash of silverware 
from her great grandmother. Oh, as we do. And yeah. not from her grandmother. And then when her mother passed, she had an extensive collection of costume jewelry, most of which oh. is not something you would want to wear these days. Well, it so depends. she's yeah. taking those two things and making wind chimes out of them. Um, Sparkling wind chimes. Yes, I yeah. have one on my porch. You'll see. But oh, I should. Yeah. Um, so it's like strings of chunky beads, all mm -hmm. colors. Some of them are transparent. And then she's drilled holes oh, in the silverware and hung that for like spoons to make the noise. To make yeah. the noise. Well, Sanford was dubious because he's had bad experiences with all the tinklies, yes. and um, <clears throat> and I'm with him on that. I'm very picky about my wind chimes. Well, yeah, they have a low tone, but I have to say, yeah. living next to somebody who has a bad, a bunch of bad wind chimes mm -hmm. is torture. And yeah. I can imagine it would be so much worse here because it's windy. Well, I I hung them somewhat inside the porch, the front porch. Yeah. So, but the other thing is that the way that they're strung, they're not actually going to chime. Oh, well, they're not going to run into each other. Right. Well, I mean, they could, but they mostly aren't. So it's more just, it looks pretty. Have you read William Goldman's The Silent Gondoliers? No. It's about why the gondoliers don't sing in Venice anymore. It's a very hard to find book, but it's wonderful. But now I just had an image of a book called The Silent Wind Chimes. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Something made that's for a specific purpose that can't do its purpose. Mm. I well, mean, it, yeah. For me, it's pretty, and I looked at it, and I knew looking at it that it wasn't going to do the wind chime thing, but that's part of why I bought it. That's why you bought it. Because I didn't want it to do the wind chime thing. <laughs> I want you to look like a wind chime, but not behave like one. Right. The ones I like are That's called... how I would pick a husband. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like you to behave like a husband, but I don't want you to behave like so... <laughs> The wind chimes I like, which we can go back to the husband part. The husband part. <laughs> this might actually be relevant. The wind chimes that I like make a really low tolling yeah, noise. They're yeah. called Bar Harbor bells. Yes. Yes. And they look like a pyramid. Yeah. And one side is is left open, so yeah. it has a tone. Yeah. Grandpa made them out of long square pipes. Yeah. And they had that wonderful and those would be low lovely. sound. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And oh, I have a son that welds. So yeah, I may see, have to put in requests. Right. <laughs> Yeah, he would use bike sprockets, mm -hmm. big bike sprockets, and then then pieces of leftover, you know, different lengths. Yeah. But he said it had to be at least 80, 18 inches because otherwise the tone was too high. Yeah. So. Well, and you could definitely do different lengths to create a multi tonal yeah. yeah. But, I mean, the thing is that I know that most people, their preferences don't run like mine mm -hmm. because the Dagon things are hard to find and they're expensive. They I mean, are. you can find cheap Chinese knockoffs. Oh, yeah. I have three of the real thing that I had picked up on the main Can coast. Can you get a cheap Chinese knockoff of the husband? So. Oh, no, that's the point. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. <laughs> it's like, they don't sound right. I know, right? I know. They don't sound right. They're short. They're the careless. wish version of a husband. No, no. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, wish. But you were, you said there was a tangent about husband's name. Well, I don't that, know why and, I that's, that and that's what I was thinking, which is that my, my tastes are not mainstream. No, they're not. And and because I mean, I was not raised mainstream, so I don't think any of us were. No, I mean that's part of when that, and that's part of what drew Sanford and I together, and that's part of what drew us, drew us the whole group together. Yeah, is there were odd and particular ways that mesh well with one another. Yes, we are odd. So and after the boys stream on Tuesday. Oh, <laughs> But it's all, it's fun because we have actually found with people a box of that misfit toys. We are so, but we're misfit toys in a way that works too. Because I mean, yeah, you can't just throw any old random odd into a group and have it work. That's very true. That's very true. Because sometimes you get an odd that just sort of dumps everything out in a weird way, mm -hmm. or is uncomfortable, or their odd just doesn't smell right. Well, it's like it's, it's like my neighbor mm -hmm. is a falconer, and his his side hobby is Welcome that he to likes. Tiny town. <laughs> I know. I get to pet a little baby Cooper Hawk. I mean, maybe about that big, seventeen mm -hmm. days old. So yeah. pretty chunky this for is, seventeen this is her days old. This is her neighbor. This is like who and she lives he next door to. He was so fluffy and soft. Um, and he and Dave, our neighbor, brought him over to socialize because the birds yeah. need to meet people and yeah. have different experiences. So they can be bomb proof when he's actually out working with them. Yeah, that makes sense. But his and his other hobby is um, really high-powered model rockets. 
So you would think that this is a guy that would be odd in the same kind of flavor that would work with our odd. And we like Dave, but we have not invited him to the gang because mm, no, he's 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 odd in a different flavor. He's a different flavor of odd. So. <clears throat> he belongs in a different yeah. Yeah. We'll mm -hmm. put you in that bowl over there. Right. So, right. And you can have all these lovely, odd people, and sometimes you want your friends to like each other. Yes. You can't just smoosh them together and expect it to work. It doesn't always work. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah, it's like, I know. I mean, I've definitely had times where I had one friend and another friend, and I'm like, you two have to meet one another. <laughs> it's like Dorothy for years was like, you and Rita have to meet each other. Mm -hmm. and she was not wrong. No. I mean, it's like you put Rita and I in the same spot and add alcohol. And, oh, Lord. oh, my Lord. <laughs> um, <laughs> so if the guys aren't going to do booze tasting on... I think we should. Yeah, I was thinking cocktails. I was thinking we should let Courtney make some cocktails and do some cocktail reviews. Because mm -hmm. she's been looking into that some more. And God knows you guys leave liquor all the time whenever you have a party. <laughs> Well, you should see the liquor supply that's here, which is ridiculous. But the one thing we never get, and which was requested for Liberty Con, it's mixers. mixers yeah. and limes. Um, I will not do the tequila tasting. No, but there was, so I had run across in my random daily YouTube promptings, um, a dessert called Fluffy Ruffles. And it's basically... It's a, let me sit with this. <laughs> fluffy Ruffles. Fluffy ruffles. As a dessert. As a dessert. Okay. It is essentially marshmallow. It's not quite as okay. solid as a marshmallow. Because I'm sure, I have to tell you. It's like gelatin and meringue and sugar. I, I think more like a guy. Mm -hmm. So when I'm thinking fluffy ruffles yes. as a dessert, yes. I'm not necessarily thinking about marshmallows. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and that's the Go ahead thing. and clarify, but okay. So the YouTube channel is called Glenn and Friends, mm -hmm. and he does, he cooks out of vintage cookbooks, mm. which is how it caught my attention. You were telling me about because him. Because I yeah. cook out of vintage cookbooks. Uh -huh. So he and his wife do, he does the cooking and stuff, and then she'll come in and join him for the tasting. Well, he had, there was a dessert, Fluffy Ruffles, and there's also a cocktail called Fluffy Ruffles. And then he's like, why? Why are there, why is this a thing? Why so much Fluffy Ruffles? And um, so he did the research, and evidently there was a comic strip called Fluffy Ruffles in oh. the early 1900s. I did not know this. And it was about a young girl whose name was Fluffy Ruffles. And I'm like, now I have to find this because <laughs> I, I'm okay, imagining so if I was the ever, illustrations that he gave a little preview of are delightful. So. If I was ever going to do burlesque, that would be my name. Yes. Fluffy, Fluffy Ruffles. And, and from the illustrations, that might not be far off what the character is I was going to say, because she sounds like the girl's got some curves. So Something. Um, so the cocktail, Fluffy Ruffles, is a um, one-to-one -one ratio of vermouth and rum with either a lemon or a lime twist, depending on the recipe that you look up. It's really, really simple, but it sounds like it well, would be lovely. Well, depending on the rum, because when I was and down in Baton Rouge, Rouge, yeah, I was down, and, ooh, and ooh, Carpana Antigua with the rum I just picked up. So when I was in Baton Rouge, mm -hmm. I went just toward a, a rum distillery. And I'm not generally a rum drinker because I find it kind of sweet and cloying sometimes. Because well, they, I have a massive sweet tooth, and my drink well, of preference is rum. So. Well, <laughs> but the thing I liked about this particular rum is it's true sugar cane rum. Mm. And the molasses it comes from, and I got to taste the molasses, which ooh. was, oh my lord, it was so good. But it wasn't that cloying sweet. It yeah. wasn't the fake sweet yeah. that you get a lot of times because it's like, oh, let's use high fructose corn syrup and make mm. rum. And blah. Yeah. Nasty. Uh, but this stuff is like the best sipping rum I think I've run across. So that combined with a really good vermouth sounds yeah, nice like a winner. Vermouth. We should definitely try that one. We it's, should. It's like a winner. Well, and that's the other thing I was going to say too is it's deceptively simple, but you could make that so complex just by changing up Okay, the so rums and the vermouths. And I'd like to make this very clear, Courtney, because I know you're listening. And you're going to be here on the live stream. <laughs> that apparently we, we've just made an executive decision because two of the moms are sitting here, so we can do that. <laughs> we're I world. really think we need to have a cocktail of the week uh, that we test every live stream. I mean, every stream. We should just have one. Well, whether we do it every stream or not, I think it would be a fun little short to do like a cocktail recipe yeah. and mix something up and then taste it. And sit down it. and taste it and see what kind of effect it has on us. Yeah. That could be... Um, I may have to find a designated driver. 
You don't live that far away. <laughs> I know. You're within, <laughs> you're within stumble home distance. I am. I am. <laughs> That's the advantage of the blanket fort. Yeah, you're within stumble home distance, and there's a couch. I can sleep here. It's not a big deal. Yeah. But I mean, that's actually kind of you now we could do that. Yeah, that would because be a lot she's of been fun. wanting to experiment, and mm -hmm. why not? Right. Why not? She's been wanting to experiment. I have been for some time now, slowly acquiring the stuff that I need to be more experimental with the drinking because my kids helping us move would well, um, drive you to drink no no this, <laughs> no because it's even funnier than that because one of them would be lugging this milk crate of bottles tinkle 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 going you guys don't drink enough because <laughs> we moved the same bottles like two or three times <laughs> um okay so the, um, my goal now is to actually like Drink occasionally. I don't, I'm never going to drink frequently, but drink occasionally at least enough to go through the bottles that we have. Yeah. So when I when <laughs> I lived back in Eugene, my my brother, not brother, but brother by choice, um, we would we'd get together like once a week, and he would make cocktails. We mm -hmm. would experiment on yeah. all different kinds of things, and we, we made some completely inappropriate ones and <laughs> um, with really inappropriate names because we were. You know, it's like, well, what do we have? Let's right. see what we can create. And, and because we both like more savory drinks, we don't mm -hmm. like the sweet ones so much, um, we came up with some really good ones because our favorite one is the Vucare, which and that to me is that is the bacon of cocktails. came out of, of New Orleans way back in the early 1930s and um, is the bacon of cocktails. It goes with everything. Uh -huh. And it is, it is so You were good. saying bacon and I was thinking smoky, no, 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 savory? No, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a savory cocktail. It's kind of very complex and, and a lot of depth of flavor. And when I ordered one, when I was at the Hidden Speakeasy in Florence, Italy, oh, don't I sound like an international woman of mystery? Um, <laughs> you are. <laughs> well, no, but it was interesting because this this place is a Hidden Speakeasy called mm -hmm. Rasputin, and you have to know about it. You know, somebody has to tell you about it. They don't right. advertise, right. and then you have to you know figure out how to get their information and call and make a reservation to go uh -huh. there. You know, and it's you know it you go up to the little foyer, and it used to be, and, and they've made their little foyer nicer. You know, where you sit. And you have to wait until mm -hmm. someone comes and gets you at your appointed time to go in. Ah. It used to be they'd slide a little door open and ask you your name. And if it wasn't the mm -hmm. right name, they'd close the door and you don't go in. <laughs> and there's a picture of Rasputin hanging there in the little cubby hole. Um, so they come and get you and you go down these stairs into this subterranean arched place mm -hmm. with a 1930s oak bar and you know beautiful tables and jazz playing in the background. And they give you this amazing little menu. But you can also order. Um, a cocktail. And I said, I would like a boot crate. He said, oh, yes. And he actually knew what it was. <laughs> <clears throat> That's it was hands down, I think, the best boot crate I've ever had in my life. Wow. It was amazing. So I want everyone to go to Florence with me and come to this hidden <laughs> speakeasy and have a drink. You know? I would love to. Yeah. yeah so um, but yeah, and that's the kind of stuff I do when I travel. I try to find weird stuff. But there's no reason we can't create our very own cocktail for us, too. Yeah, I was going to say, um, what would a Three Moms of the Apocalypse drink look, look, look like? Oh, dear. Hmm. Huh. The, other <laughs> the other night, and this is not Three Moms of the Apocalypse, but you were talking about making with what you have. Mm -hmm. I had, uh, oh, Sunday morning, um, we went out to breakfast, and both Dorothy and I decided we'd have a peach mimosa with our breakfast. Oh, good for you. Because I don't know. We, we why not? To, why not? Why not? And it was it was just very very sweet. Oh, and I mean it wasn't awful, but it was very very sweet. And so I got home and I was talking to Sanford about my disappointment of this. And and Dorothy and I had already made plans at that point too. Okay, we've got to get together and make mimosas the way we like them. Yes. Um. So that will have to happen. But that evening, um. I was trying to spend a Sunday relaxing, and I'm really bad at relaxing. I was going to say, this is not one of your skills, dear. No. You, you really, it's, hmm. I'm bad at it. You're going to have to practice this a whole lot more. <laughs> and I say that as somebody who has the same affliction, <laughs> not good at it. So, so, he, sometime in the afternoon, he was like, I'm going to make tea. Do you want to make tea? <laughs> and I had suggested that we put some alcohol in the tea. Well, we yeah. Do that fairly often and we didn't have any amarillo which i really like in my tea oh yeah. it's, it's really I, i'm out i'll get more mm -hmm. um it's on the list but what i did have check and make sure we don't have any in the bar yeah i mean we may it's one of those things i like to have on hand because it makes sense it goes nicely in coffee and tea yeah but i did have a bottle of peach nuts oh so on the, after the peach mimosa i made myself chai Mm -hmm. with a little bit of peach schnapps in it and a little bit of cream. 
and it was really, oh, really good. Yes. So that not would so be much, lovely. not so much peach schnapps that it was too sweet, because mm -hmm. the peach schnapps I have is is fairly cheap stuff. I got it for a recipe. Yeah. So one of the author recipes for eat this. Will you read oh, yeah. that? So yeah. I have quite a few things that I bought it's for like, recipes. This guy. Like I have a green apple thing that I'm like, I don't know what to do with you. <laughs> I just had an awful flashback to one of my father's favorite wines, mm. Danny Green Springs. Green apple. I don't. Oh, ooh. Mm. It, it's sort of like Mad Dog Twenty Twenty, supposedly trying to be classy. It's nasty. So, <laughs> mm. of course, my father is an alcoholic. So, but it was like, ugh. sort now, of what, like that that the green stuff oh, from Fool's Con. Pinky oh, green. Pinky oh, green. That was no. the worst stuff. Just never again. I'm like, mm. I had it in my mouth, and I'm trying to decide what the heck is wrong with this. What does this taste like? And then I realized that it tastes like the musk that a beetle puts off when you disturb it. Yes. <sighs> and it was just like, mm. it was really bad. <laughs> it was electric green. So it should have just stayed in, in the bottle. It was fine in the bottle as a prop. It was great as a prop. Yeah, but mm. <laughs> <laughs> just don't drink it. You can bring it. We'll just sit it up there on the counter and put like flashlights I on it. I was going to so say, can... tape an LED to the bottom of it and yeah, just glow. Yeah, just glow. <laughs> <laughs> just leave it up there because no. If you need a radioactive prop, bottle of that and an LED, you're good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> no. Oh, not no. so much. But there are other things out there that are a lot of fun to experiment yes. with. And the, the German, yes, there are. The German wine that... Um, oh, yeah, the Lieb Brand Milch. I, yeah. I've had that before because it's a little drier. It's not as sweet. A lot of the dessert wines from Germany are just way too sweet mm -hmm. for me because I'm not a sweets person. I don't like yeah. sweet things. Um, and those are like, ugh, you know. But that one was nice and dry. Yeah. And, well, and Sanford <clears> was <throat> commenting that it took him right back yeah. in, into memories. And I was yeah. like, okay, I have to get more of that. Yes. Because yes. he he doesn't like wine. Yeah. So yeah, dinner this time was was nice because we all fit at one table. That yeah. was weird. There's only nine of us. Uh, there's only nine of us there, which was a little strange. Um, but more pulled pork for me. So um, <laughs> and we just kind of sat around the table and drank wine and ate corn on the cob and and ate lots of pulled pork. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, uh, Ian was like, "You made how much? That's enough for 34 people." And I'm not not with this gang. It's not. I knew better. I have 17 no. pounds of pork, and I was like, "Is it going to be enough?" It was. It was, but, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Had we had more people show had up. we had more people, we were covered. We were, I always try to make sure we're not sure. We're covered. Covered. But it was, it was, it was very interesting because it was a smaller group than normal, which mm -hmm. was um, kind of nice. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, small and quiet was about my speed. Yeah, because we had a week last week. Last week was a pretty intense gang. We, we were like, we had a lot of Reconture Press stuff happening last week. Um, and a and lot I of, had a lot of stuff. You, I mean, going you just on. had stuff. You just had all I, kinds I was of stuff just on going top. Nonstop, and I was yeah. up late, and that's yeah. never good for me. It's not good. <laughs> Plus, Courtney's out of town, so we're doing yet again. We're doing a lot of stuff via Facebook Messenger and running in circles and trying to coordinate. We're herding kittens. Yeah. Um, and it's been well. Plus, it's end of the month stuff, which is ugh, always a nightmare, um, and paperwork and. Trying to figure out because you know I have to do all of our prep work for um, Liberty Con mm -hmm. now. Yeah. For, get, for getting there, um, and then just we get a little overwhelmed. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. do. You know. And yeah, and I mean, I'm looking at it, and I'm trying to budget for Liberty Con and make sure that other stuff is taken care of, and it just it did it got very well overwhelming there for a bit. Yeah. And it's like this week, I'm coming into it a little bit more rested. Mm -hmm. But I'm still, I have a meeting after this recording, yeah. and I have a meeting on Thursday, and mm -hmm. it's just, it, it rolls into, and I spent, I spent my Monday afternoon making the yard presentable. I think you, did you work <laughs> out some frustrations in the yard? No, but it was very fulfilling, because it's been a while, so we taught the kids how to mow, and they took over that chore in 2016. Mm-hmm. But even before that, Sanford was more likely to mow than I was. Yeah. I've always been more likely to run the weed whacker than he was. I find that so satisfying. It is. Yeah. I miss, I used to have, we lived on the farm, we had a gas-powered weed whacker with a blade attachment. Okay. So let's, and I let's, love that thing. Let's back up just a minute. Okay. Because, <laughs> <clears throat> no, I, I'm always interested in, in, in how a person came to be the kind of person who loves to garden. 
you know, I mean, I mean, and so you grew up, you were homesteading. I mean, your family just gardened and they had gardens and they did things because it was a matter of survival for you. Right. 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 Well, dad was, I mean, when I was born, dad's enlistment was delayed by a few days in order to allow me to be born. Okay. And so mom and dad were 18 and 19 when they were married. And I came along exactly 10 months later. Okay. So two very young people. Mm -hmm. Dad's, the job that dad thought he had landed, um, he was going to get his forestry degree, and he had landed an internship that was going to turn into a job once he had his degree with the Parks Department in New Hampshire. Okay. And we got halfway to New Hampshire, had stopped to visit with his family, and he got a phone call that his job had gone away. Oh, the funding dried up for it. Oh, that's not fun. So he enlisted in the Air Force. Okay. Mom had not then, nor did she have until I was in my teens, a job. Yeah, because she was raising kids. Well, not only was she raising kids, but my youngest sister was profoundly handicapped. So I I remember them doing the math and coming up with, if mom went out and got a job, it would cost them several hundred dollars a month. Yeah to yeah. have her working outside of the house. That's not unusual, yeah. So my mom, dad was more or less a city boy growing up. He was raised in a military family. Mm-hmm. And so he didn't really know a lot of stuff, but mom was raised in a family that, I mean, they were migrant pickers at one point. We talked oh. about strawberry picking in Washington. Yeah, and that yeah. My, my family did that. Mm-hmm. Um, so they hunted and fished and trapped for subsistence reasons. I mean, the trapping. So her family did that. Yes. And, and gardening and farming and and literally homesteading in Alaska. Mm -hmm. That's where she was born and raised. Mm -hmm. Um, So for her, it was just part of life. So for her, it was part of life. So here we are and I come along and then 18 months later, the next baby and 18 months later, the next baby. Oh man. So. Three toddlers. And and at that point, mm. mom and dad had a discussion and enough was enough and they took permanent steps to no more. We're, no more children. We're not. Right. Well, and, <clears throat> I mean, I don't think they even realized at that point how handicapped my youngest sister was. Well, yeah. I mean, because she's autistic, isn't she's she? She's autistic, but Which, she wasn't diagnosed until she was six. They yeah, just it takes knew, a while to manifest. Yeah. They just knew she was a floppy she's just baby. Different. She's yeah. just different. Yeah. She couldn't set up. She, she wasn't progressing normally. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, so you got three little kids. So, and, and I mean, dad's in the Air Force. He was never deployed overseas, but there was a chunk of time when I was, I don't know, six to eight, where he was on TDY to a remote duty station where the kid couldn't take us with him. Oh, okay. So you're home. So yeah. I'm home. I mean, this is, we lived on an acre in the Willamette Valley of, in Oregon at that point. And we're in the Willamette Valley, were you? Crabtree? Oh, Little you were in Crabtree. Tiny. I know okay, exactly you know where that is. is. Yeah, tiny, see, because so I'm a, don't. well, I'm a Eugene girl, and the Willamette yeah. Valley is very familiar to me. Mm. You know, I mean, because I spent most of my life in that area. After we got out of the military and came back, that's where I lived right. was the Willamette Valley, and and uh, there or going over to Bend and seeing family over there. And I spent an enormous amount of time running around that part of Oregon doing SCA. So I've been in just yeah. about every campground there is south of Eugene. <laughs> and 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 I would also, Tim and I, my second husband, we love to just go for drives in rural yeah. Oregon and find these weird little places. So yeah, I know exactly where that is. It's so weird to be around somebody who's familiar with the territory. Right. So. Well, we, we lived in Crabtree for a little while. And later on, we lived Fertile. in... Oh, yes. Yeah. We lived in Dallas. Mm-hmm. And, I know Dallas is. Um, and we lived in Dallas, Oregon, not Dallas, Dal- Texas. Yeah, Dallas, Oregon, and um, and we lived in Corvallis, technically, mm-hmm. but we were way outside outside of, of Corvallis. Yeah. Um, so I mean, like the Salem Public Library. When it's, I was it's little, your friend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. Dad got out of the military after ten years, and at that point, it was when we were in Corvallis, mm-hmm. and we were living right next to a big wildlife refuge. Oh, okay. And so, I mean, um, so Brennan's parents live, well, I think it's his grandparents live outside of, um, Salem. Oh, okay. They're like due east, due yeah, west. Brennan so. and I, it's funny because when I talked to Brennan Hankins he, and he and I compare notes, we lived in a lot of the same places. You did. A scary did. amount of the same places, but a generation apart. Yes. Because I'm a generation older than he is. Mm-hmm. He's not quite young enough to be my kid, but darn close. close. Yeah, he's, he's young enough <laughs> to be my kid. So, 
So it's funny because we compare notes and we're like, we were both in the same places in Oregon and both in the same places yeah. in Alaska. And I'm yeah, like, like wow, that's, that's, <laughs> that's fun. The world is big. Yeah, but so, I mean, I so learned... So you grew up with your mom having big gardens. Right. We always had gardens. We always had livestock because, I mean, chickens are great for mm -hmm. cheap, easy eggs, meat. Mm -hmm. And we had meat rabbits. Um, oh, yeah. Dad rabbits was, are yummy when we were stationed places that she couldn't have more livestock. Yeah. And then, gosh. So I this is just been, a normal part of your yeah, existence. Yeah, so I grew up with, with goats because mom can't digest cow's milk. Mm -hmm. And when we lived in Crabtree, it's when we got our first horses. Oh, yeah. So, and mom was adopting Mustangs from BLM. Oh, which you could do quite a bit yeah, there because yeah. there were so many of them in right. Eastern Oregon. So. Right, and we had, we, had, we had a string of Mustangs. Yeah. Um, so I grew up gardening and, and I learned how to hunt. My great grandfather taught me how to hunt, mm -hmm. um, up on the steep hill behind his house there in, in Florence, <laughs> Oregon. Yep. And, um, and there's a lot, a lot of things on the hoof up there to eat. Oh yeah. So. And my grandmother taught me beachcombing, which wasn't, we weren't looking for shiny things, although that happened too, but she taught me what I could collect and eat. Clams. So did you she, clamming out oh, of the, we did on a the lot of flats? Clamming. Yeah. I can remember being out on the clamming, being really small, very blonde, very very thin, because <laughs> I was a wiry little child. And uh, and I can remember being out there and being so cold that I had to go pee oh, and I couldn't undo my pants. Because <laughs> so I actually wet my right? pants. Because it's like we did my, my I was so cold. I was wet to my skin. Just like, well and it's that the coast cold wet, cold mm -hmm. and damp. Yeah. There is so cold and damp. I remember going out with my uh, grandparents on my mother's side fished out of Winchester Bay. They would did um, salmon fishing. Ah, yeah. And we get up really early and get on the boat and get sick going across the mm. bar. Oh, <laughs> seasick. <clears throat> but we'd go out and yeah. out of Winchester Bay and, you know, we'd drop crab pots before we left mm -hmm. and go out and, you know, we'd drop all our lines and we'd come at my very first fish I ever caught was um, a 16 pound Chinook salmon. Cool, that'll yeah, spoil Yeah, deep you. sea fishing. Yeah. yeah, well, salmon for me was like tuna fish because right. they caught it all all season long. It, because of Alaska, so my, my, my mom's family has been in Alaska since before it was a state, mm -hmm. quite a bit before it was a state. And in fact, there are family stories about the resentment of it becoming a state because <laughs> that, that was not a fair vote. But, um, so my family had access to a fish wheel. Oh, handy. And one 24-hour period, but that's enough. That's more than enough. <laughs> and between that yeah. and the church also had access to the fish wheel for the same amount yeah. of time, one 24-hour period. So between those two, I learned to really, really dislike salmon for a long time. It mm -hmm. took me a while to come back to being able to eat salmon mm -hmm. because I had, I mean, yeah, we, we would get I it. cleaned an awful lot of fish. <laughs> so whenever you whenever you lit and you were stationary, you just would do a garden. And oh, you yeah, would be no, in the yard. That was automatic. And you would be doing it. Yeah. Yeah, as soon as, interesting as, soon because, as you had ground, you were working it. Yeah, my mother always wanted to garden, um, but we moved so much. We, we moved like every three to four months mm -hmm. um, and from maybe housing to apartments to maybe housing to apartments. And I swear yeah. to God, every time my mother had an avocado, she would stick three, um, oh, hello, the train goes by, <laughs> three toothpicks in it over, you know, in a soup mm -hmm. can trying mm -hmm. to get it to sprout. And she did this thing, which I found very interesting. It's like, you know, if you keep trying the same thing and it doesn't keep working, why do you keep doing it? She had read somewhere that you let it do a good sprout when it gets to a certain point where it's a certain height and stuff, you cut it off so it'll branch. And she would do that and invariably it would die. She was probably cutting it too low and there were no buds. Right, I know. It, but she was counting the buds and she was doing it. And I, and I for years, watched yeah. my mother yeah. attempt to do this. And so I realized that her thing about that is me with trying to have plants. I keep trying and <laughs> I kill them, mostly because I'm inattentive. I don't pay attention to that. I mean, I barely fed my child. So plants just go by the wayside. So it's interesting to me that, that you are so in tune with plants and, yeah. and growing and but no but you are i mean well, it, and here's the thing <clears throat> is that i am a lazy gardener i'm an adhd <laughs> gardener so i get the inattentive thing too yeah and i will kill house plants often because yeah, of i don't have house garden plants anymore. usually in most of my life gardening has been you put it outside you give it what you need get it started and then you just let it go so oh, I, like I can approach. i can focus long enough to get things started 
Uh-huh. The problem comes in when you ha- when there's a situation like Texas last year when it was incredibly hot for oh, so, so long. Hot. Because so then hot here. They, I, I needed to be watering things like twice a day in yeah. order to keep them alive. And eventually yeah. I gave up because it was just like, I you, I can't. It's just, I there can't. Is, the so, only thing I've been successful with is tomatoes because mm-hmm. I could stick them into a, a half a whiskey barrel mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and occasionally remember to water them. Yeah. And and as long as the whiskey barrel was in sun, you know, I, mm-hmm. I could grow them. But, yeah. you know, they had to be pretty damn tough. Because well, and that's and that's my thing, and, and I was taught this from early on growing up because my parents found the first permaculture book. Oh, and the whole concept of permaculture is to make it easy on yourself. So yeah. it's basically gardening for lazy gardeners, and you start with zone one, which is where you barely have to step outside of the house. Mm-hmm. So that's the stuff that needs more care because then you will actually do it. Yeah. Whereas if you have to walk a hundred yards, yeah, to take care of the garden, yeah, no. Or then it's probably not going to happen as much. If it's out in the sunshine, you will not find me there. Yeah, and there's that because too. Pacey white girl, <laughs> skin cancer. Well, I, and see, <clears throat> up until the vitiligo started on me, it's almost certainly stress triggered. It's one of those things with an autoimmune disorder when it kicks on later in life. There's yeah. generally a trigger for it. That's Sometimes true. it's another illness. For me, it was stress. So it didn't kick on for me until I was 25, 26. Oh, okay. And up until that point, mm-hmm. I had been able to tan, and I yeah. would get seriously tan. The hair would bleach blonde. Yeah, so being out in the garden was no big deal. Right. right, I could be out in the garden and all day long, and I was. I would I would leave the house in the morning and not come back until dark. I turn into a tomato with green spots. Yes. So yes, that's and then not I get good. skin cancer, and hats make me sweaty. Make my hair get sweaty. sweaty yeah, hat ring. well, I don't these like days hat ring. I'm having to teach myself to <clears throat> when I walk out of the I house. Did, I bought a hat. hat on. I bought a hat because Texas is aggressively, cheerfully bright. Yes. <laughs> I'm just like, I was talking to Mike Peterson, who's a fellow Oregonian who came to Fool's Con. Yes, he was lovely. And he was really delightful. It turns out we actually know the same people because he was in theater in mm-hmm. Eugene at the same time I was in theater in Eugene. And we're like, you be as so yeah world it's big um but we were talking about the, the things that have been hard to adjust to mm-hmm. and he says do you find texas to be excessively it's bright it's really bright here it's too bright <laughs> it's like people who are it's like that perpetually cheerful person who comes to your house yes. is like stop it <laughs> be gray this, this, this so, spring has been a little better it's, it's been partly overcast an awful lot <laughs> yes it's been a lot easier but boy last year i was just like i need to punch something mm. because you're being too cheerful at me well, I think I imprinted. I still love fog. I love fog, I mean, especially beach fog. Mm, Isn't that just so mysterious and wonderful? I used to love that. Spending time at my grandparents oh, and yeah, getting and just ever. like walking outside into the fog, and it just wraps around you. Well, and you're and in you, this can, you can you can feel it veil. settle onto your skin. Yes. And it's just and and your hair gets you get your hair becomes crystalline. But not wet, mm-hmm. you know, because it, it just adheres to your hair. Yeah. And, so, and if you hit under under a street light, when your hair is all crystalline from mm-hmm. it, your hair glows. Yes, it's the best thing ever. Yes, right. That does not happen here. No, no. I have not seen fog here. I have not seen fog. Which I mean, I have seen steam coming off the ground mm-hmm. as it rains, and then the sun beats it into submission. <laughs> <laughs> but. I have not seen fog here, and we won't really because no, it's not really a foggy area. Right, but, the conditions are all yeah. wrong for it. <clears throat> but I remember in the Willamette Valley when I lived in Harrisburg, I'd be going going from Eugene back out to Harrisburg, but not mm-hmm. on the freeway, and the fog would be sitting in a layer about three to four feet above the um, the fields yeah. and the road. Yeah. So it'd be right at the level of your windshield. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's it was like this cake layer of yeah. frosting. So a little difficult to drive in, but pretty darn cool looking, you know. There was a morning I had been over to Vermont for a gig and I was driving back to New Hampshire. And the thing about Vermont and New Hampshire is that there is a road, a highway, mm-hmm. a, um, that goes between the two of them, but okay. it's at a weird angle. So it's really not practical for most purposes. So if I was Government driving... road building at its best. Um, it's, so, it's, yeah, whatever. It's anyway. a little tiny rural New England that yeah, nobody really cares. Know. So I was, it was all back roads coming back. And I had left early, early in the morning so I could get home so I could do stuff. And as the sun started to come up and I'm already on the road, 
it hit the, the fog in just the right oh. way, and it just it turned gold. Oh, that's and the best. I felt like I was in fairyland. It oh, was just, just beautiful. Oh, so cool. It's like driving up to Oak Ridge because um, when you leave Eugene, you go up into the mountains to go to Oak Ridge, mm -hmm. Oregon, which is where I used to live, and um, it's about 45, 50 minute drive. And it's nice and flat, and then you get to the base of a dam, uh, which they built three dams on that particular fork of the river to prevent flooding, because Eugene used to flood every yeah. winter. And you climb up, up above this dam, and invariably, there's fog sitting right up to the top of the dam. The, mm. the, the weather inverts. Like so, so like you're down in the bowl in Eugene, and when the weather inversion happens and it can go on for weeks, you get really yes. tired of the fog. Yes. Because after a while, it's just not, it's just nasty air. In the smog, yes. But in very, you could drive up to the top of the dam and right up into the sunshine. Well, one uh, one evening when I was driving up, it was, I knew I was in the fog. And the fog mm -hmm. has that sort of bluish tone to it. Yeah. You know, and after a while, it just kind of gets that way. But then in the evening, as I was driving up out of the fog, it turned the most brilliant purple. Ooh. And it was just like, I felt like I was in that, that story about the fog. I think Larry Niven wrote it. Very different, or was it Asimov? Where you no, know, it was Harlan Ellison. You walk into the fog, and then you step as you you go out into the fog and come back mm -hmm. into a, and you're in a different world. Yeah, I felt like I was like, if I keep driving, am I going to end up in Narnia? I yeah. mean, I mean, it had that feel of I am leaving. It was so so surreal and so. Yeah, that's how my golden fog was. Right, it was, it was the like same I thing. Am in a whole other world. You feel like you're walking through a portal, mm -hmm. or I felt like I was driving up through a portal. Yeah. So disappointing when it wasn't. So, <laughs> but it was brilliant, brilliant purple. It just yeah. in a way I'd never seen before. It was really kind of cool. One of the cool things about my life has been, and you're the same way, is mm -hmm. we've been enough places. Oh yeah. That we've seen all these really amazingly oh. beautiful. I mean, I think when the everywhere... light turns gold, when the, it, Florence, the light gets slanty in mm -hmm. Florence. There is nothing like it. The light is so golden. And that's why artists forever have it's been the going art. left. It's yeah. the center of art. But also, you know, like when you're up on one of the hills above the Willamette Valley mm -hmm. and the sunrise happens and you see the mountains on the valley. Oh, oh yeah. best thing ever. Driving up the Kaziar into Alaska, mm -hmm. there's the Kalani Lake. Mm -hmm. And the road goes, you're way above the lake. Uh -huh. And it's like a steep drop off on one side and steep up on the other side. But you're looking out over the lake, and I was too little to be driving, so I could. Yeah, you could really did. look. Yeah. Um, and it's just this phenomenal shades of teals and blues, oh, and yeah. it's that cerulean yeah. blue that doesn't look real. And, and it's like and the mountains just whoosh yeah. right there. And yeah, yeah, that's what it was like at at Lake Majori when at the end of the Italy trip because. I'm, I'm, I am I like Texas, but it's mm -hmm. very flat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so flat. And so I could just walk down the steps and go out and sit at a bench under a tree right by the lake. And I could look a little bit that way. And there were the Alps. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were the Alps, you know. I mean, and and it, they were having rainstorms come through. Yeah. So the rainstorms were kind of coming uh, kind of across the mountains, directly across from me, which were mountains. There's like mountain, lake. Yes. Lake mountains, yes. you know, and then oh look the Alps. Um, mm. So it's very it's very dramatic. So the rainstorms would kind of peel over the top of the hills mm -hmm. in front of me, and they would kind of cut off the view about halfway of the Alps because the Alps are so much more. Yes. And so you get this bizarre thing of the sun on the top of the mountains, top of the Alps, mm -hmm. reflecting off the snow with this screaming beautiful orange color. Yes. And then the blue right under it of the rainstorm that's dumping snow and rain, and then and the sort of grayish blue of, of you know and the blending of, of mm -hmm. the sunshine and, and the rainbows were insane. It's just oh, really yeah, beautiful. I can imagine. But yeah, we are lucky because we've been places. Well, it's like you're talking about that, and I'm remembering the mountain glow on the Alaska Range. Oh. So as the sun starts to come up, mm -hmm. you're, where we were in the, the Tanana River Valley, we were in the shadow. Yeah. And the sun would start to rise, and you would see this glow of just this brilliant pinky orange. Peach was my favorite color for a long time. Oh, yeah. Because it was the closest I could get to that yeah. color. Right. Um, it's a, it's just, just the best. It is. And it was just, I mean, there's a lot of places that I would like. I'm half like, I'd like to go back and see it again. And yeah. the other half of me knows you can't. Well, and that's the thing. It's, it's, it's there. 
at that moment, and it's in that moment, mm -hmm. right? And, and the past is a different country. The past is you a different country. Aristotle has a very interesting, um, a, a very interesting puzzle that he talks about how the the past, um, the past, you know, you're in the present, and the past is a thing that has happened mm -hmm. but no longer exists because it has happened. Right. And you have the present that does not exist because it has not happened. Mm -hmm. And then you are in the present. What exactly is the present and how long is it? Yes. You know, what is yeah. this space that's in the middle that we're in, right? And, and and which is one of my favorite phrases is be here now because this only happens right now. Yeah, you, right? can't, you can't time travel. You can't time travel. You're, you're in it. And time travel was 10 minutes ago in this particular video, mm -hmm. right? I mean, we can go look at it again, but it isn't that spot. Right? No, and hopefully... <laughs> We've got sound and <laughs> yeah. Well, and the other thing too is with with growing things, it's it's a representation of time, you know, in in a way of of you know, and time passing. When you mm -hmm. think about ancient cultures and how they measure time, it's like where are we at in the crop cycle? Yeah, you know. Well, and because it's usually fairly predictable, mm -hmm. not always. Not always, but they were pretty good at figuring it out. They were, you know, and anybody who's read an almanac knows that, right? right? And and that's the other thing too is that there's a lot of little signals that got used and picked up on. Mm -hmm. So um, growing up reading the Laura Ingalls Wilder oh, series, yes. yeah, in I think it's Farm Boy, um, they talk about not planting corn until the oak leaves were the size of a squirrel's ear. Yes, because the trees know. The trees know. Not always, because peach trees are remarkably stupid that way. Yeah, some some <laughs> plants are like what? Uh, they bloom and then it freezes and they die. Like why? <laughs> yeah, it's like Henry. Some some plants are like Henry. <laughs> yes, some plants it's are like, like what? Was I supposed to? <laughs> oh, <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> which is why I'm going to train my peach tree espalier against yeah. the wall <clears throat> so that hopefully the radiant off the building will keep it warm enough to not freeze yeah, every mm -hmm. spring yeah, because yeah <laughs> it's just because <laughs> peach trees are remarkably dim <laughs> yeah, some plants are not so smart they're very pretty but mm, <laughs> they're kind of like fluffy ruffles that fluffy way. ruffles <laughs> fluffy ruffles on the wall so yeah um in other news right it's, it's, you know, I mean, we're having another day of wonder um so the whole thing with postcards Mm. We have been having the worst time trying to figure out what to do with them because there are so very many good ones. Yeah, and we've kind of figured out something. But uh, Courtney, in her inestimable brilliance, in the middle of the night, tossed us something via messenger um, and gave us a gift, um, which we're going to pass on to you guys. Um, starting at 7 p.m. after this broadcast, and for 15 minutes, every 15 minutes, eight times there will be a post going up in North Texas Troublemakers YouTube account. Um, oh, all in one day. She's going to do them all in one day. Oh, wow. Of just, of hers. Oh, well, yeah, no. So Courtney has taken eight of her stories and has uh, recorded them with her image as a, a YouTube short reel. Um, and what we're going to do is post these. And we're going to have channels for each of the books. Okay. Yes, and each of the books will have the option for the authors to uh, live record their um, their story with their image, so they can use it for promoting their story. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we can also arrange to have other people do it for you too. But yeah, um, somebody that's not comfortable reading out loud. Yeah, if they don't want to read have, out loud, we yeah. have some we have some vocal talent on tap. Yes, we do. Um, so the first discussion, the first approach we're taking is we're gonna we're gonna do this with books and just see how this works out. But we could also do an almost channel. Yes. Um, an almost of, please read your story for us. And mm -hmm. we'll post it for you. And you can happily put it anywhere you want to promote your story. That's one option that we have coming. Yes. Um, so, <clears throat> so, And we've been wanting to get into doing audio. So yes. this is a baby step in that direction. Well, this is also, we did, um, with the books, we do have the audio rights and promotion rights for the books for a year. So we figured this is one more tool that we can mm -hmm. give our authors to promote the book that we can we can record the book we can give this you could post it on your page um show it to people and we're going to link to the books with in um, the description with all of the audios so yeah yeah so look for that at seven when we get done and north texas troublemakers site which is 10 minutes from no. now <laughs> ish unless we run long unless we run and well i don't we can't you have to go to a meeting so we can't I run do. long today I do. So, so yes i've been um but that's that's a special little gift for today for coming and hanging with us. So, and we keep trying to do this other special thing, which we're going to be doing on Friday. 
Will we be yeah, Friday? We're doing it Friday. The plan is to do it Friday. <clears throat> We, uh, fingers we, crossed all goes well this time because this will be like postponement number three. Well, you know, <laughs> the problem is, is we have, there are four women involved in this project we're trying to put together for Friday. And all four of us are incredibly busy women. Yes. Doing a lot of very busy things. Yes. Um, and so getting us all in one spot where we can all sit down and actually talk to each other. Right. Damn near impossible. It is, but we will make it happen. Yes, but we're also in three different time zones right now. So. <laughs> That's a teaser for next small week. Small complication. Just much. small. Just much. So, so this time around, we've been playing with our new tools. Yes. You may have noticed that Cedar has, has a thing on her. Mm -hmm. And I have a thing on me. Right, so right here, you can't really see it. Nope. We have a thing for each other. Yes. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and we're using my phone again to see yes. how this works. Yes. Because this is kind of a test. Because wouldn't this be fun to like run up and attack people at LibertyCon with my phone and a microphone? <laughs> Like right? sure, right? Yeah, you know, so we can. Um, so we're trying this out as new equipment this time to see how this worked out. So please let us know. Yes, okay? yes, yeah. And I know that um, <clears throat> we do occasionally get the comments about the audio not being right. We're still, I mean, the still growing pains. We've been doing this for a while now, but we're still figuring stuff out. And occasionally we change things up and try things new to see if we can do it in a better way, um, in a different way, different yeah. places, being able to move yeah. and not be stuck in one spot. A, a big part of this is the fact that we had been using the same equipment that the guys use for yes. their live streams, but that means we have to move a whole bunch of things every single yes. time, which is kind of a pain in the tush. Yeah, well, we have to deconstruct and reconstruct the right. point of port, So, and so mm -hmm. it's going to be much better if we can make this this very lightweight solution. Yeah, functional. I think this is going to work really well. So um, maybe my phone died as it was, you know, my phone was dying to, to give me a gift <laughs> for my for our future. So, ouch. Um, <laughs> so, I'm also going to be <clears throat> doing some stuff on my channel with my phone, yes. which is the same vintage as yours. So yes, but it was working. We probably could have made it work anyway. Yeah, but no, my phone was, the battery wouldn't yeah. have made it through an yeah. hour. So yeah. it was the poor thing. It went out on its its last legs, and mm. now I have this very robust, very young, pretty thing. <laughs> so, mm. um. <laughs> it's robust. It's got a lot of energy. What uh, can I say? <clears throat> going back to the bells again. <laughs> we mm. like big bells. What can we say? <laughs> uh, Fluffy ruffles, honey. <laughs> so. I, was, uh, I do have kind of a PTSD response to pluffle, ruffles, though, because I hate doing ruffles. Hate them. I mean, and we did Carmen for Eugene Ballet, and it was like, oh, thank God they're skinny. Um, <laughs> because, and we had to make these ruffled skirts, and ruffles, when you're doing acres of ruffles, I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it is quite possibly the most boring thing on the planet. If you don't have a ruffle attachment on your sewing machine, which will do the ruffling for you, oh. you have to do all the gathering and the pinning, and so it's like, oh my God. Um, so when we got to Carmen for Eugene Opera, which was really funny because the director of the opera was like, oh, well, you can just use the ballet. When I went, hmm? ballerina, opera singer, <laughs> ballerina. <laughs> I mean, we could put ruffles on a leg, you know? <laughs> it's like, oh, look at my fancy red ruffles on Palazzo, my one leg. Like Palazzo pants, <laughs> right? With right. Those yeah. really wide ones. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it just doesn't really work, guys. So we had to make all of the cigarette girls, which is running around in ruffled skirts and everything. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. my entire staff hated me because mm -hmm. we had to make 25 ruffled skirts and then we had to make the flamingo dresses and then we mm -hmm. had to, it just, it was like, oh my Lord. Ooh. So yeah. If, if I ever do so something for myself again, I, I want to make myself another full circle skirt. They're wonderful. They are. Yeah. I used to have two, two at different points mm -hmm. and Loved them. Even I wore one all the time, even though it was hot pink, which was the sneaky, yeah, not my color. It's okay. <laughs> Full circle skirts are great because yeah. you, it's amazing. You can twirl and just flip, and then you can take up a lot of space. Yes. So. And I love twirling and yes, yeah, twirling with fluffy ruffles. Right. So. There's something about There's a nice a theme. flowy skirt. There's like a theme. Here. There is a there. theme. Like, this hmm. is the fluffy ruffles episode. <laughs> right? <laughs> So I think the plan is we have to get Courtney back here so we can start making cocktails. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think I need to pick up a bottle of vermouth at Specs this weekend. I think we had, we should go through, oh my God, guys, the liquor supply here is <laughs> epic. Um, <laughs> it, but I keep it at the back of the shop because it is not for retail distribution. No. no. Um, <clears throat> and we don't drink it here either because, you know, mm. 
but we did we did, we we did, did one cast where we did we we had drinks but yes. we should, that's after hours we should definitely do like a yeah. live stream yeah. like cocktails so courtney start thinking of cocktails so after, i think we should start after with hours broadcast after Los hours Angeles. broadcast right <laughs> <laughs> well, I also know that we'll probably do some of these from Liberty Con, mm -hmm. little shorts from there. Yeah, yeah. So. Definitely. I mean, I am looking at Liberty Con, and then I have this long trip home, stopping to see my mom for a couple of days. Oh, that'll be nice. So, yeah, yeah, it is. I yeah, think. so June is going to be a weirdly intermittent month when we get to the end of it, so yes. about what we're going to post. So Yeah, we'll I, will, I will very definitely be out of pocket for... Yeah until july 2nd well, that's okay we can we so, can snag some people well and, and and or i may make be able to make an appearance from remote mm. just like you guys do sometimes remote from the yeah yeah, yeah remote from the <laughs> rural wilds of kentucky um and i say may because mom's internet not the greatest may not be the greatest <laughs> it may not work the best so <laughs> So yeah, that's we have to depend on some internet on Friday that we don't know, if, but we'll figure it out. So, but we'll see. And, and we might be able to do cell phone hotspots. Yeah, we'll that's, figure it out. That's going to be a work. Thing. I mean, my yeah. phone does pretty well, so I'm thinking Liberty Con's going to be interesting. Who knows what's going to happen from that, and when I will manage to record. Mm. I think we'll get part of the no shit there I was panel. Oh yeah, totally. So we should do that. Yeah, and the the Rock and Troll Press thing too. Yeah, we, we have try a, and do. We have a Sunday we morning. Set this up. Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Raconteur Press. Well, that'll be panel. that'll be entertaining. That'll be like a, a second round of Tolkien. Who count the hangovers on the panel thing? So Ian trying not to slide down the wall. Oh, that was hilarious. <laughs> I think I think Kelly was still drunk <laughs> uh, for the Malta panel at Tolkien. It was. They, Might have been. It, I think he was. <laughs> so because I know how late he was up. Because so was I. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I can't do that. <laughs> can't do it as much anymore. And this this catching up with me, this getting old thing. Okay. And <clears throat> being raised a farm girl, I was just it's bred in the bone of up early. Yeah. So I, I would it. never have survived as a farm girl because I think I think you go to bed as the sun comes up. You know, I, I much I do much better if, if my I, I will become a night owl completely because Casey mm -hmm. Red Girl, you know, <laughs> and I just, I don't see any reason to be, I, there's that, what is that, I've seen a pin that says if, if the Lord had wanted me to, to see sunrise, he would have put it at a different time of day. <laughs> <laughs> or sunrise is the alarm clock for going to bed. So, because I spent, I spent, what, almost three years doing the night movies where I worked till two or three in the morning. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I'd go have dinner and I'd go to bed and I'd get up just as the sun was going down and go back to work. Yeah. So there was three years there. I barely even saw daylight, mm -hmm. which might have accounted for my depression and lack of vitamin D. Yeah, so maybe. I mean, for me, it's just, I've just always done this and I've tried shifting my schedule either to please someone or for whatever other reason. And um, I did manage for a few months there when I was working at Mary Kay, I was working on an odd modified second shift schedule and I was getting off at midnight and I did okay. Yeah. Um, but I had to put up some serious blackout blinds in my window so I could actually sleep. So, no. But, that, but mm. it's not something I, I <clears throat> when Mary Kay wanted to bring me on full time permanent as an overnight shift, I was like, nope, no can do. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't mind working overnight because nobody's up. I mean, it's, it's less annoying. But, but yeah, I'm not a not a morning person. Mm. But I have to do very morning things here at Liberty Con, which is going to be interesting. People are like, "So when do you show up at work?" I said, "When I get there." Yeah, I'm showing self employment. Um, and people are like, "Can I come by today?" It's like, "Yeah, I'll be there." Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like I won't be awake, but go ahead. <laughs> If you feel a need, go right ahead, but don't expect me to join you. It's like all this gang that they do a Sunday morning breakfast at nine thirty. I'm like, what is wrong with you people? You know. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm usually have been up for a couple of hours, have had a couple of cups of coffee, and yeah, I'm all like, in all bright eyed and chipper. And I try not to bounce too much because poor Dorothy at that hour has one eye open. Yeah, she and is moving into the too. the support and guidance of her dear husband. Yeah, this, this early morning <laughs> stuff is not okay. So. Well, thank you for joining us for our wandering yes. chat about gardening and things and life, life, <laughs> and, and and stuff and and, and stick ruffles. around fluffy ruffles. 
Let's stick around for, our, for a debut of our first postcard short, which will be happening shortly after this on North Texas Troublemaker. So, and there'll be a new one every 15 minutes, eight times. So, happiness okay. every 15 minutes, eight times. Yes. <laughs> so, have fun, guys. We'll see you next week. We don't know what next week looks like, but we'll figure it out. We'll find out. Right? So, Bye. off we go.